Hey guys, welcome back to the new rider series here on Blind Stuff MTB. I'm your host Stefano and we're here to talk everything mountain biking. The new rider series is a playlist aimed at prospective and new riders where we're covering mountain biking starting from the very basics and progressing on to more complex subjects as time passes. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the disciplines or types of mountain biking and how bikes are designed differently for each one of them. As we mentioned in the last episode, mountain biking is a super broad term. We're going to basically consider it to be leaving the pavement behind and going out into nature to look for a challenge on the trails. These challenges can be either physical, to test how fit you are, or technical, to test how good of a rider you are. Now, the truly good thing about mountain biking is that no matter what type of challenge you're looking for, there's bound to be a discipline or a type of mountain biking that is going to fit exactly what you want. So, what are these types or disciplines that I just mentioned? Well, mountain biking can be split into three basic types. Cross country, trail, and downhill. The vast majority of us are going to start as trail riders, but as time progresses and we gain more practice, we will either find that we want to switch our main discipline or add additional ones. Trail riding is the simplest form of mountain biking. It could be loosely defined as just getting out on the trail and riding. There's no real objective out there other than to just have fun. A regular trail ride will have a little bit of everything, including some pedaling, climbing, and descending, with varying types of challenges throughout the ride. Most commonly, you'll take a few breaks over the ride just to enjoy each of the sections. Think of this as the kind of ride you'll do when you go out with your buddies. If over time you find yourself constantly pedaling your heart out, racing up the climb, or in general not wanting to stop and putting a big focus on endurance, then you are more probably geared to be a cross-country or XC-type rider. XC riding focuses more on physical fitness with long rides and higher average speeds that involve lots and lots of pedaling. Endurance is a key aspect of this discipline. XC riders tend to give equal importance to all sections of the ride, whereas a trail rider may be more inclined to climb slower in lieu of saving some energy for the descent. XC rides tend to have less technically challenging terrain. But don't be fooled, this doesn't make it easy. It's just that the challenge is another, massive physical fitness. I've always seen it this way. If you're not sure if you're more of an XC or a trail rider, the easiest way to know for sure is to imagine what's the coolest outfit you could ride with. I'll give you a few seconds to think about that. If you pictured yourself in Lycra climbing the steepest of climbs at full speed, then you're more likely to be an XC rider. If you pictured baggy shorts or a flannel flopping around while you bomb down the mountain, then you're more likely to be a trail rider. Joking aside though, there's only one way to know for sure, and that's to get some experience under your belt. Last but not least, in downhill riding, riders have absolutely no interest in climbing by their own means, only descending as fast as possible. The defining element for this discipline is using a shuttle or lift to get to the drop point and just bomb down the trail. None of that pesky pedaling. As such, it's most often done at purpose-built locations, commonly mountain resorts that serve as a summer bike park and a winter ski destination. Downhill is the fastest, most technically challenging form of riding, and it involves big jumps, drops, and generally unforgiving terrain. Downhill tends not to be too beginner-friendly, as injury is much more common than in other forms. And crashes occur at higher speeds and more often. Generally, it's a good idea to be a proficient trail rider before you progress onto okay. downhill riding. It just so happens that manufacturers design their bikes with these disciplines in mind. We had previously mentioned that the most important distinction on a bike design was its suspension design. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper on that because today we have to understand a few extra concepts. We already talked about hardtail versus full suspension. And today we're going to mention two more things. The first one is the suspension travel. Now the travel is the distance from here to here, or in the case of the rear suspension, if your bike has it, from here to here. That is basically the amount of squish the bike has, or how much it can absorb before it uses all its available suspension. The second thing that we want to talk about is the head angle. And the head tube angle is basically this right here. So this is the head tube, which is the part that holds the fork in place. Now the fork is at a certain angle with regards to the floor. So if you think about it, Bikes have an, a fork like this. If you look like at a Harley Davidson motorcycle, their fork is much further out. And if you look at a racing motorcycle, their fork is much further in. This is done because it changes the characteristics in the handling of the bike. In the case of bicycles, both the suspension travel and the head angle change depending on what discipline the bike was designed for. If we're gonna take a deep dive into bike design, there's many more differences that are relevant. But today, since we wanna keep it simple, we're just gonna focus on these two and use them to explain the different kinds of bikes. It's no coincidence that manufacturers design bikes with these different disciplines in mind. 
It turns out that as a gross oversimplification, the more suspension travel and the slacker the head angle is, that is how far out the fork goes like this, the bike is gonna be more suited for downhill riding and less suited for efficient XC riding. So it's always a matter of balance. You will notice that some of the bikes that are more geared towards efficiency, that is getting more forwards movement when you pedal, will not be as good as descending. So that's why you want to find the right bike for you, depending on what kind of riding you will be doing. So XC and downhill bikes are pretty obvious. XC have short travel and steep head angles to promote efficiency, and downhill bikes have a lot of suspension and slack head angles to really help down the chunky terrain, because they don't really care that much about pedaling. Now, where it gets a little bit trickier is in the mid-range. The mid-range, what we've been calling trail riding, is actually split into two, trail bikes and enduro bikes. Trail bikes, like this one, are designed to be an all-around good bike. They're supposed to perform well in everything. Enduro bikes, in contrast, are designed to perform a little bit better on the downhill. So they give up a little bit of the climbing capability to gain a little bit in the descending capability. You'll usually see that reflected by the fact that they have 10 or 20 extra millimeters of travel and their head angles are just a little bit slacker. Now, I don't have four bikes here to show you live the difference between them. So in order to get a good look at them, we're gonna go into the computer and we're gonna use Giant's advanced lineup to look at the differences between each type of bike. I just chose Giant because it's a popular brand and I'm familiarized with it, but this is true across all brands. As you can see, Giant organizes their bikes in the categories that we had mentioned before. They start with their XC bikes, then their trail bikes, then their enduro bikes, and lastly, their gravity bikes. In this case, gravity and downhill are interchangeable words. We're going to start by taking a look at the XC bikes. XC bikes have a strong focus on pedaling efficiency. That is, how much forward movement you get from pedaling. In order to do this, they use steep head angles and short suspension travel. This is the category in which we most often see hardtails, usually sporting between 80 and 120 millimeters of suspension travel and head angles around 69 degrees. While these bikes can in fact descend, they're willing to trade some of that capacity in order to be lighter and much better at pedaling. Trail bikes still pay attention to efficiency, but it's not the main concern. A balance in a do-it-all bike is the objective here. As such, they can get away with a bit more suspension and slacker head angles, as this helps in confidence while descending. Usually trail bikes will have around 130 to 150 millimeters of travel and around 67 degrees of head angle. It's okay if they're a bit heavier, as they will be exposed to rougher riding. Durability is important and thicker construction is used. Enduro bikes are like the evil twin of trail bikes. They care a lot more about descending than anything else, but they still need to be fun to pedal up the mountain. So they'll shift the balance a little bit more towards ascending. They'll have more suspension, usually around 160 to 170 millimeters of travel, and slacker head angles, usually around 65 degrees. Since more suspension usually comes with weight, and these bikes are expected to be treated even more roughly, a few extra pounds are normal. Downhill bikes are simply not meant to be pedaled uphill. As such, weight is less of a concern and focus is placed on having a beefy construction that can withstand the toughest of riding, with lots of suspension, usually between 180 and 200 millimeters of travel, and very slack head angles, around 63 degrees. This means that the bike is super stable at speed and tracks very well. Of course, they lose some of the nimbleness and much of the pedaling capacity. You should really consider downhill bikes only if you're going to be at the bike park a lot. So let's bring everything together to wrap up. Choosing a bike is highly dependent on what your main interest will be. You'll have to figure out what kind of a rider you are and what kind of trails you'll be riding the most to see what fits you best. Do keep in mind though, there is a bit of overlap in functionality of all bikes. Choosing one of a certain type doesn't mean you're limited only to that. It just means that that is where the bike will excel the most. Well guys, that's going to be it for today. I hope you found this to be helpful or at least fun. If you have any questions, go ahead and shoot them in the comment section, and I will definitely see you for the next episode of the new rider series. Happy riding!